Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for being here with us celebrating uh, Black uh, Heritage Month. And here with me, we have Eddie Condes, who is a poet, who is a Palm Springs resident, and in my heart, a very special friend. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, man. <laughs> Welcome to Palm Springs Library. Thank you. Um, you and I have been here working together for what, five years now? My, uh, my home animal, yes. Yeah. About five years, yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me, Eddie, where are you originally from? Where I was born? Yes. Well, originally I was born in uh, Puerto Rico, Patilla, Puerto Rico. Um, and then eventually we made our way to uh, the United States, wound up in Chicago. And um, long story short, or short story long, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, spent pretty much uh, my childhood and my adult life in Chicago and um, wound up coming down here to South Florida in uh, about 2005, right? You know, so I've been here since. All right, yeah. so you've been in very hot spots. Puerto Rico, Chicago, Miami, very nice. I don't know about Miami, but Chicago, <laughs> Chicago's not really hot, man, let me tell you, only in the summertime. <laughs> um, and so since 2005, you've been, you've been living here, um, and specifically here in Palm Springs? In Palm Springs, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Um, so why don't we introduce one of your poems as as a measure of Chicago, speaking of Chicago, what? So you want to get right into it? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, that's basically what I do. So, I mean, can I read you this one, Cafe? Yes, please. Um, during interviews, I, I tend to like to read more poems and read poetry than actually answer questions and talk, but we'll do a little bit of both. Yes. So this poem is called uh, Cafe Colau. And I wrote this back in 2002. Uh, Café Colau is the name of a small bakery and cafe in the Puerto Rican neighborhood of Chicago. Café Colau remind you of the finca, remind you of mondongo y sancocho y cuchi frito dreams, remind you of jazz, of jibaro music, of la patria mi isla, remind you of los viejitos y viejitas that walk and smile strong like warm mountain tropical embrace. Remind you that we are human, that we are, that we are Puerto Rican, that we are, that we are Boricua, de tierra pura, y mi gente dura, donde el café colado cura todo que te duele, donde nació, donde nace el amor. Yeah, so very good. This is amazing. Yes. It might, my, my I, I get goosebumps. I don't know. Um, this is, this is, uh, this talks to the soul, it talks to the heart. Um, so what made you come to Florida, Eddie? Well, um, I, I worked outside in uh, the city of Chicago. I was a city employee, um, but I literally worked outside. You know how some folks have a city job and they go to an office and they go inside? Well, we didn't do that. <laughs> we went to the office and we got on a truck and then we went outside. I, uh, I was at the electrical department uh, in my latter years, um, and I think the cold weather, as I got older, just kind of took its toll on me. Mm. You know, when you're younger, it's like, oh yeah, this is cool, you know. But as you get older, and especially uh, working afuera, it, uh, mm. it, it takes its toll, man. And um, we started visiting Florida from uh, some um, some neighbors that we knew that actually became like our second mother and father. This Cuban couple, man, beautiful, beautiful people. Um, they moved down to West Palm Beach area back in like 91, por ahí, 92, and, and we started to visit them. You know, we, they, we got invited uh, to visit them, and, we, and I, I, um, I started coming down to West Palm Beach area about 92, 91, 92, around that time. And I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the area. It reminded me a lot of uh, the memories I had of Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I mean everything, the uh, los sapo, the frogs that were <laughs> smashed on the street, I remember that, the legantijos, you know, the little lizards, yeah. the coconut, the trees, the palm trees, I mean everything just reminded me of Puerto Rico, man, so mm. uh, eventually um, I think that's where my heart was and, uh, you know, thank God that I was fortunate enough to retire at the age of 50 okay. uh, 
from my job in, in, in Chicago, and uh, I had 30 years of service. So I took it. I took it. I took that uh, opportunity, and I said, you know what? That's where I'm going, man. So that's how I wound up over here. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And when did you think that inspiration started, like, to hit you as a poet? As a feeler of words? Yes. Um, I think pretty much throughout my whole life, I mean, even when I was a kid, I would kind of think about words, but I never really wrote them down. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I really started uh, putting words down on paper, like maybe my first, second year of high school. Okay. You know, when I really started really getting, I guess, serious about it and mm -hmm. just going ahead and letting it flow, you know. Um, I don't know if I've ever really considered myself to be a poet. I was explaining to you beforehand, because um, there's a definition of, of poetry, of poets, and uh, I don't know if I've ever fallen into that category, you know. Um, they say it's maybe spoken word. I don't know what the heck that is. It's kind of like the word Latinx. I don't know what, the word, what that word is either. But um, I don't know. I, it's, I just write. I guess I write from the heart, not so much from the mind, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess, yeah, I guess I am a poet do you at the age of 65, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do, do, you, do you think that you had any influence um, from someone or did you read something? Uh, well, you know, in, in high school we started reading uh, literature. I've always, you know, actually, uh, that was my dream to become a, a professor of literature. And, and go to college, but it just never happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess in high school, uh, we would go to uh, different uh, outings and things like that, and I was exposed to, and they had people come into the high school to do, uh, there was one guy in particular, uh, he actually became the godfather of my daughter, David Hernandez, uh, may he rest in peace, at the, who came to our high school and, and he did a poetry reading. And I, I just completely fell in love with it, man. I said, wow, so this is what it's all about, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was heavy, heavy, heavy. And I actually became part of their group. Uh, he invited me to be part of their group. Uh, it was called uh, Nosotros. We actually came up with an anthology. Uh, we would do these workshops, man, like every, on the weekends uh, in the north side of Chicago. Um, and we had different poets and musicians and artists, and it was like a collaboration of just artistic people, man. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. And I think I probably was one of the youngest, you know, because they had people that were already in their 20s and 30s, and I was still in high school, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, I mean, as far as influence, and then I started reading, um, I was really always interested, I guess, in poetry, so I was always reading, like, poetry books. Um, you know, I started off with the with the uh, usual Robert Frost and E.E. Mm -hmm. e. Cummings and, uh, you know, the stuff they had in school. But then I wanted to expand, and I started going to the library and, and, and going to uh, bookstores and, and getting my own stuff, to, you know, and to find out that there was actually other other ways of putting poetry together and, and reading, you know, writing poetry. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how it came about, Sh I guess. Share now. with us one more one more of your poems. Sure, of course, man. What if I do another one in... Uh, uh, let me do another Chicago one. Okay. These are most of my poems I wrote in Chicago because I've, I've been, I was just showing you, I didn't realize that I've been writing um, probably longer than you've been alive. So, um, like 70s, 80s, 90s, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I come across stuff and I say, wow. Anyway, this poem is called Little Brown Boy at Barbershop. Little brown boy with the raisin hair, pelo pasa. You laugh like Spanish music melting away the Chicago cold while watching muñequitos on the TV that hangs from the ceiling. Speaks fast in strange language. You cry like Puerto Rican poetry, like your black mother of African beauty and strength, like the memory of my grandfather, darker black, little brown boy with the raisin hair, pelo pasa. In you I see myself running naked through carreteras de tierra of dirt and dust and mud bien rojo and fun and feet bare without shame that bleed but feel real damn good. Little brown boy with the raisin hair, pelo pasa, you are the mere little that I lost brown many breaths boy ago. All right, very nice, very nice. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> was anyone in your family a 
writer that you that you would know? You know what? Uh, there could be, because um, I've got I got family that I don't even I mean I know of them, but I don't know who they are. Uh, uh, I got family in, in in Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I got family in Puerto Rico. And there's a long lineage of, uh, of, of people that I don't even know. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I told you uh, beforehand, uh, my, my grandfather and my grandmother had 19 children. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but offhand, I know for a fact, uh, I have a brother who's a percussionist, okay. uh, a health care musician. He's also a uh, professor. Uh, my mom, God bless her soul, she uh, just turned 85 uh, last month. Um, she writes, she writes poetry, she writes music, she plays guitar, she taught herself how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess. So yes. So I guess, you yeah, have, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah. that but artistic. Before, before that, it could yeah. be some folks. <laughs> I understand one of my aunts in Puerto Rico also writes poetry, so I don't know, you know. <laughs> so yes, there's art in your family yeah. and it so, runs. Yeah. yeah. So it's in the blood, you know. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, where have you presented your poetry? Well, aside from here in, in Florida, uh, back in Chicago uh, with the group I was telling you about uh, of uh, artists and poets and writers and all that, we did, uh, I was also on TV. And, uh, Very nice. <laughs> and I was on TV uh, reading my poetry. At the, we read poetry, uh, we did a poetry reading in a prison, in okay. the state prison. Uh, cafes, um, concerts, uh, festivals and things of that sort obviously in people's homes at parties you know that was always the best thing yes at the uh, aquí here in florida man i've uh, i've done a few readings uh, i've done one here in palm springs a while back um uh, in collaboration with this organization that i'm with uh the cream literary alliance i'm a board member of um at the northern museum at uh emco oh, um what else? So there's been several places. I can't believe that I'm still, right. yeah, <laughs> that I'm still doing this. You know, that I'm still. I, I kind of get a kick out of it when, and I find that I'm humbled and honored, really. And when I'm asked to uh, present my poetry or read it or do an interview or whatever, it's like I get a kick out of it. I really do. You know. Yes. Yes. And and we we've done poetry here at the library as well so yes. he's he's been also part of our events and that's how i was actually we met that's at emco yeah, at right, there you go. That's we right. met and that's when all this magic happened yeah, yeah, yeah. um so um if you would share another another of your poems please yes of course we, we of can't course. get enough i love i love i love i love in Spanish, in Spanish. In Spanish? In Spanish, yes. Because we always speak in Spanish, we are bilingual. Yes, 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 yes. You know what, there's one that I wrote. Uh, yeah, okay, here's one. Solo, pensando solo. Estas palabras que pesan mucho se esconden en la sombra de tu mirada. Cuando el poeta grita una sonrisa fuerte y con gana y la luna partida por el medio se me queda mirando sobre las nubes que bailan un bolero lentamente y recuerdo yo de los años que pasan ayer rápidamente, tan rápido que pasan. I got kind of caught up on this poem. I, I don't know if I read it right, but anyway. Yes, you did. You did. Uh, español mío uh, sometimes is not too good, you know. But, uh, <laughs> not, not very good looking. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Está bonito, but she can't talk, you know. <laughs> it happens. It but happens. Uh, yeah, I get kind of cut when I'm trying to read Spanish. And you know, I, I found out that I've been reading, I mean, I've been writing Spanish and English for a very long time. I thought it was just now that I started read, uh, writing more in Spanish. But if I'm looking back through my stuff, I was combining Spanish and English Creo que desde que empecé a escribir, you know. It's in your roots. It's you know, and I don't know if I was doing it right or what, but it's there. It was, it was there, yeah. man. <laughs> it was there. So you have poesia. 
poesías regadas, poesías, eso es called poesías, poesías regadas por donde quiera, desnudas y sin zapatos, poesías sin entradas y salidas, poesías que lloran y gritan, una canción con ojos cerrados, poesías que duelen bien duro cuando te miran de lejos, solamente el viento, solamente el viento sonríe y el cielo abre con lágrimas frías, como estas poesías que se esconden en las sombras de mis sueños, donde estoy despierto. Very beautiful. beautiful. Gracias, Marta, gracias. Um, so, <clears throat> do you think at some point in your life that you've been more inspired at some times of your life rather than others, or, or inspiration has been throughout <clears throat> The, the I, I whole think, journey. I think, I think the latter part of what you just said. Um, I think in my younger years, I, I was trying to establish myself as a poet. So, um, I don't know, I think I did a lot of writing back in the days, like in the 80s and 90s into the 70s when I first started writing. And then into the 80s and 90s, I did quite a bit of writing. Um, and now, it just happens <laughs> whenever it comes, you know. Like I was telling you, I can't force myself to sit down and say, oh, I'm going to write me a poem. No pasa así, you know. I wish I could, man. So, that, you know, it's like algo ahí. Like algo con fuerza, I don't know. But, um, yeah, probably in my, in my younger years, I, uh, I did a lot more writing. Um, I think I, maybe I was going through quite a lot of, a lot of things, you know. Mm. So. Okay. Um, well, we, we, you were talking about how how your Hispanic background has also influenced you by by the language, by by <clears throat> just expressing yourself in 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 that way. Um, do you think any other things from your B Hispanic background has influenced your poetry? Maybe the music, since you're Boricua. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I, I am I am I am Port Puerto Rican. Soy Boricua. Um, I love jazz. Mm -hmm. I love jazz music, which is uh, I don't know how odd that is for Puerto Rican, but I've loved jazz music for a very long time. I love uh, my folkloric música de Puerto Rico. Um, I don't know, I think, but I, I grew up thinking more in English mm -hmm. than in Spanish, mm -hmm. so, but I always had that, that Spanish always, always there, yeah, then, yeah. you know, yeah. because when I was growing up, uh, you know, back in Chicago as a kid, man, um, you know, they didn't have no bilingual mm -hmm. education, they didn't, you know, you were, matter of fact, I started school uh, at the age of seven and they put me in first grade, so I bypassed kindergarten. <laughs> I didn't even know they had preschool. Um, and the main thing was for you to learn English. Yes. Speak in English, write in English, you know, be articulate in English, so um, thank God that at home at least they spoke Spanish, you know, and we did everything in Spanish, you know? Yeah. The, the yeah. meals and the gatherings and, you know, they went too keen with speaking English, so that was a good thing, I guess, you know, yeah. now that I think about it, so. Yeah, because it, it's still there. It's still there, it's still there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, not as well as I would like it to be. Uh, I would love to be able to speak and understand Spanish um, in a more academic level, mm -hmm. but hey, it is what it is, you know. Unless I go back to school now at the age of 65, <laughs> I don't know how that can happen, man. <laughs> dreams are dreams, <laughs> everything <know>? can happen. <laughs> All right. Do you have um, another poem that you would oh, like got, to share? I got, I got I several poems. I know you've poems. got plenty. He's got plenty. I've got plenty. several poems here. Yes. You want another one in Spanish? Okay. Uh, Since we're talking oh, about forgot, it. I forgot to uh, mention when I wrote that. Yeah, let me see. Okay, this one I wrote in 2019. Uh, and this is called Aquí en Sur Florida. El sol nace otra vez todos los días con sonrisa y lo abrazo con brazos muy alto y muy derecho con pecho y amor puro, y también un beso de esos, de, esos, de esos que curan, el sol nace y calienta mi cuerpo y mi mente bien suave, 
Y pienso yo de mi gente y lloro lágrimas en mi sopa que hizo mami ayer muchos años atrás cuando era el niño, casi hombre, cuando empecé a escribir las letras que se esconden en poemas y soplan fuerte como la lluvia de un huracán sin viento, solo dolor con mucho calor y color oscuro, se siente bien duro. El sol nace todos los días y con sonrisa, para que sepa, para que sepa, para que sepa que estás vivo. Respira, 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 simplemente el sol nace. Muy bien. Awesome. Oye, me enredo, me, enredo, me enredo con mis palabras <laughs> en español, concho. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. That, that's what, I mean, poetry does that uh, when, when it's talking to the soul and when you Ooh, just... When you're writing that. it, when you're writing and you're trying to put it in a form that you want to see it, you know, but then when you're reading it, um, especially for me with the Spanish, um, me enredo. Yes. Once you deliver it, it's something that you can put it in your mind and you can see it. It's not no longer yours, it's for someone else and it just it, it's it's a it's a big thing. When when you put a, a like it becomes something else when you mm. put it out there. And that's a way, definitely, good way of putting it. I love that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um So, do you have any advice for the writers out there? My advice is to keep writing, I guess. Um, to read, read as much as possible, whatever you, you're into. Um, and just write, man. I know sometimes, it's, you know, with life gets in the way. Um, but sometimes you just have to find the time, I don't know. Like for myself, I, I, it, it comes. If it doesn't come, forget about it. It's not going to happen. But some, for some folks, like maybe, you know, writing short stories or essays or things of that nature, it might be a different uh, avenue, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to be like, you know, those people you see on, on, on a movie or something where they sit in a typewriter, you know? <laughs> Speaking of typewriters, I love, I, I used to have one of them old <laughs> black typewriters, man, like, cheek, 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 with a ribbon. I love that type, but I don't know what happened to it. But I would love, I always love to be one of those writers, you know, when you sit down and click, 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 you know, and you type away. Um, but anyway. Do you think, um, as a writer, and do you think that you get more out of when you're going through like a negative experience rather than a positive experience? It's an interesting question because. I think, I think for me, uh, before, uh, going through a lot of hard uh, uh, things in life uh, made me write more, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but I also write uh, like poems about my grandkids, poems about my wife, mm. poems for my daughter. Um, mm. I think the closest people that I can see what they're going through on a daily basis, I think kind of puts me in a, in a perspective of saying, hey, you know what? Like, I would love to read this poem for you. Um, I started writing actually to my granddaughter, Maya, even before she was born, when mm -hmm. she was in my, I think my daughter's uh, belly. belly. Yeah. And I started writing a poem for her, you know, and uh, I think she's been the one that, besides my wife, I think she's been the one that has really inspired me to write a lot of poems, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you know? Go ahead, read. Share, so share I wrote this. Us. She's um, she's actually going to be 17 years old uh, this April. So I wrote this when she was uh, 14 and 15. I was trying to write her a poem like almost every time she had a birthday, you know. Uh, this is for Maya, Maya Paloma, my granddaughter, number 14 and 15. A slow clave beat repeats, repeats, repeats the rhythm of your heart while your hands dance in the air, while your eyes tell the story, while your paloma wings soar and roar your name inside this poem, deep beneath the words that sing and cling to shadows of full moon smiling strong, in the blink of a teardrop that touches souls, a slow clave beat repeats, repeats, 
repeats the rhythm of your heart, the sound of your laughter, the beauty of your face, the strength of your name, captures the precious essence of who you are, granddaughter, a slow clave beat that breathes in and breathes out, that breathes in that breathes out in harmony. Beautiful. You have more. Oh, I've got plenty, I just brought a few. Yes, I know. <laughs> we could we could stay here all day reading your poetry. Um, I just I just read them out at random. Yes. Uh, that particular poem I wrote back um, 2020. Recent? August, August of 2020. This poem I wrote back in 1992 is called Concrete Poems. Concrete poems make no sense to me because they are cold to the touch that comes with, from within the part of yourself that never really understands why you write the words that have cracks at the edges of their true meaning, yet they always come back to harden like rock in your hands. Very nice. Do my poems make any sense? I don't know. Sometimes they make sense to me, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I look at them and I say, what the heck was I trying to say here, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it's... Um... This one in particular. You know. mm -hmm. It's called Hard Times. I wrote this back in 1992. Hard Times for my people of color and for people of all colors. Let's march backwards out of step. Let's scream a dream and laugh. Let's play a game all day called living. Let's call ourselves on the line sometime again. Let's hold the wind together. Let's hold it tight. Let's forget to remember how to talk. No words, just the indifferent touch from our eyes. Let's go hand in hand in hand in hand and work it out one by one. Nice, nice. Very strong, very unifying. I, I, I really love that. Um, so well. Yes. So I read that down, right? And I believe um, you have uh, the one from from your grandfather as well. Isn't that the one? Uh, which one is that one? Isn't that the little boy brown? Uh -huh. Negro? Yes. This poem is called Negro. I wrote it a while back. I don't have the title, I mean the uh, date on it, but I know I wrote it a while back. Negro. <coughs> Blue-black is deep and colored of my grandfather's face, who is only a memory of childhood filled with smoke that dances from my, hand, from my handmade cigars. Blue-black is deep like the soul-spirit laughter of my forgotten ancestors who found the answer to all things relative. Blue-black, blue-black, blue-black is deep like the beginning of existence when God smiled more often. Very nice. Then our last Quanto one. Tiempo tenemos? That's it. I think this would be our last one to okay. share. You all ready? Then uh, let's 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 uh, go out with this one then. Let's go out with a bio. That's basically what I am. Un bio. Don't feel like it, but sometimes I do. <laughs> this is called a bio <clears throat> by Don Agustin. <laughs> And this poem I just realized I wrote back in uh, May 12 of 1977. El viejo para Don Agustin. A bag, paper brown, on your head to keep the sun from your eyes. You know, your voice no longer makes music like when you were young without wrinkles on your body and now you only gesture about beautiful things like the birth of children and the rain that comes without warning. Your name, Don Agustin, I remember well, your small smile bright as Puerto Rico going back home someday dreams. Pero aquí, you stay, for lack of language, of your eyes all worn and gray bait like your hands, who touch the skies on mornings of roosters cantando, y café colao, y pan con mantequilla, smells of earth wet under your bare brown feet, callous from the mountains you've climbed, mid vessels in your life, mind, Vida has reflected its warmness into mine. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Eddie Condes. <laughs> Please give him a round of applause back at home. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gracias. Bye-bye. Gracias.